sec. Hello and welcome back to Donnelly Vlogs. How are you? I'm great, thanks for asking. We've been on a train today, a very long train up north to see the most exciting non-league team at the moment. What is that team, Michael McCubbin? It is Salford City. Yes, you guessed right. The fastest rising team in the non-league. And as you can see from this lovely stadium behind us, this club has slightly higher ambitions. They are going for football league status and they could achieve it this year. Big title race in the National League. We're here to see what's going on at the club, what the fans are saying, what the players are saying. Let's go. Really tasty, only £3.50, local brewery, can't get much better to be honest. Might be the best one we've had yet. Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to film match footage this time, so instead we decided to vlog our experience with the famously rowdy Salford fans. And it's no wonder they're in good spirits. Since the famous Class of 92 takeover in 2014, the club have achieved three promotions in four seasons, built a brand spanking new stadium, attracted stars like Adam Rooney, and are now attracting nearly 3,000 fans to each game, compared with under 400 just four years ago. So with kickoff imminent, we spoke to two people who are involved with Salford to see how they're getting on with the big changes and how they're dealing with growing ambitions. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> no, this is fine. Right. You okay? Yeah, you okay, Bavis? Have a good teams. game. Have a good game, yeah? Yes. How's it going, Bavs? All right, yeah. we're all we're all ready. Yeah. We're all ready. We're just waiting now for the crowd. Some of our fans may know you. You're the real star of the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the cheeky so, one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how long have you been involved with the club? I've been down here for nearly 30 years. When it was nothing like this. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I was going to say, what what is it like now? Is it is it still a bit surreal seeing it it's, like it is? Like? Yeah, the thing is, I'm not saying it's spoiled it, mm. but the only part is, like you say, I can't see the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I go away to the games now to watch them. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Is that was that kind of one of the reasons why you started to go yeah, away so much? Yeah, because I yeah because I don't see the games here now. But other than that, yeah, it's all it's all good. Quite pr quite pr proud of it, really. Obviously, you can't drink in the stand anymore. <laughs> this is the first time. This is a big one. Obviously, the professionals have gone up in terms of the club, or everything around it. But it's got to be changed. I've got to wrap it. You can't have a professional team playing a team pop now. Obviously, this season, big title race on. Yeah. How far do you think Salford can go? Not only this season, but in general. Well, do I don't know how far they can go, but I'd like them to go into the football league. Mm. That depends on the fans. Really. You can't have a team in football league one or two with only two thousand fans. You know now, obviously, because yeah. obviously it was just a dream at the beginning. But when we did go up and up, it was like, no, it couldn't really happen this now. Well, thanks so much for seeing us. All right, you're yeah. welcome. Sorry for keeping you safe. No, it's all right, you're yeah. welcome. <laughs> thanks so much for seeing us. Always? Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck with the game. But yeah, very quickly, what do you think the score's going to be today? 3 0. Yeah. We're winning the league. <laughs> Big prediction from Andy there. Let's see if they can get their first home win since September against today's opponents, Aldershot. So not even five minutes gone yet. Salford, 1-0 up. Two minutes gone. Adam Rooney. I didn't even see the fans. I was too busy looking at the fans. Captain for about five yards out. Atmosphere is already electric. This could be a very, very good day. Let's see what happens. About 15 minutes gone, still 1-0 up. The quality of football is decent compared to what we're used to non-league-wise, and you can tell that they're gearing up to go up. All the shot giving it back as well, so... We'll see, it's still, still, still quite early in the game, but it's all good on top. So I've made a friend in the stand. Clark, nice to meet you, mate. Hi, right, cool. Yeah, cool. Very good, thank you. How you think, what do you think of the game so far? It's a poor deal, and it's not a bit flat. Rooney's playing well. I think we'll get a win today. We'll get a win. What's it been like following the team this season? Two lot drops. <laughs> I don't come for that though, I come for the atmosphere. You're obviously a Man United fan. How does it compare here to Old Trafford? It's better coming in. The atmosphere at Old Trafford is not good at the moment. Here, the wind lose and dry, it's just great atmosphere. Come with the kids, you can't beat it. Was that the reason why you let why you yeah, stopped going to Old Trafford? Yeah, the atmosphere was the reason. It was uh, even when you won it, the <laughs> United I didn't like going. It's just a, it's just a nice Boring atmosphere to be honest, the football is horrible. Come here, I don't care how it's played, I just like come here. Half time. I am 
your burger man. I'm excited about this one. We put a lot of money into that little cafe, so uh, big thing. Bloody good that. Lovely range of sauces. Onion is nice and soft. Taste everything. Soft bum. It's a good burger. Really good burger. I don't want to be too generous. I haven't found the perfect burger yet. Can't give it a five. So it has to be a four. Very good burger. Chips. Spicy man. Very impressed. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Spicy mayo makes it. That's a 4.5. Would be four on its own. Spicy mayo, extra half a point. It's quality, that. Yes, man! 3 0! 3 0 sauce, and half just gone. That was so bad. 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 Great save for the keeper. Great save for the keeper. Salford are playing them off the park to be honest. Yeah. You can see why they should be League 2. They've just been on them all the time. Rooney and Gaffney have been very impressive. Uh, Pond has been phenomenal. First half special. Haven't had much to do the second half. All the shot though. Really need to evaluate their defence. I mean the third goal, the uh, centre back or defender of some sort, took it out of the goalkeeper's hands and headed it into his own goal. So that doesn't say it. Nothing will. On the basis of this, what do you think about Salford's chances of uh, making it to football league? To make it football league, easy. Easy. I mean, they're, they're virtually there. I mean, they've got the ground for it, they've got the fans for it. I don't see why they shouldn't be, and I'm, I, I expect them to be there next season. So, it's our one only chance of, you know, do Salford in the non-league vlogs. You know, enjoy it while it lasts. With the Salford fans in good spirits on their way home, we dragged manager Graham Alexander and centre-back Nathan Pond out of the warmth for a quick chat. So we're out on the pitch after the game, 4-0 to Salford. It ended, great result. Absolutely freezing though. And you're only in a jumper, I'm in a jacket and a, uh, and a hat. So thanks for staying out here and speaking no to us, Graham. Obviously, big victory today, 4-0. How do you think the boys did out there? Oh, they were excellent. Um, you know, we started both halves in, in real aggressive uh, way, scoring in the first minute of both halves, which is a massive positive for us. How's it going, mate? Very good. Yeah. Uh, very pleased with individual and team performance today. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fantastic. Yeah, you were saying the individual performance as well. We were very impressed in the stands. Probably FDFC's man of the match today. So yeah, congratulations. We don't have anything to give you, uh. but like. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you've come into Salford this season. They obviously they've been, they're the fastest rising team in the non-league. Three promotions in four seasons. Obviously you've had managerial experience at similar clubs. Fleetwood Town, you took over when they were in League 2 and took them up mm. to League 1. Similarly to Salford, they rose very quickly through yes. the non-league as well. Is there a kind of similar kind of feeling between like your experience at Fleetwood and your experience so far uh, here? Yeah, there is a little bit. I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a club where the team has made massive strides in, in really quick time and uh, and probably the club needs to catch up in the infrastructure and, and the support of that first team. You came from League One with, with Fleetwood Town. What was your reason for kind of taking this, take, kind of going two leagues down? Uh, I don't think uh, I have nothing left to prove at Fleetwood. Uh, obviously I've been there, what, 15 seasons mm. and uh, obviously I'm coming to the back end of my career and I might not got an opportunity to, uh, to play for another team. So. I think the, the similarities are, are quite strong, really, but um, I think each club has its unique, own unique story, um, you know, with it, its own background. But um, if, if there is two clubs that are on a similar path, I'd say uh, Fleetwood and, and Salford are, are really uh, the same like that. I want to take them to the Football League, get back in the Football League. But, uh, it's just a good challenge. Mm. Uh, 
rumours around the league about Salford, everybody wants to beat you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what I love, I love playing up against it, everyone wants to beat you and uh, you just want to prove everybody wrong and keep winning. Was that, was that similar when you were at Fleetwood as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's everyone's cup final. The, the sky's the limit, it feels like, for Salford at the moment. I, it? Think it, I think it is, so uh, there's a lot of work to be put in place to, to make, that, uh, make that dream happen. So that's it for Salford. 4-0 the final score, as you didn't see, unfortunately, because we could no. get match footage. And hopefully we would have been able to cover it from the crowds without how much of that footage we can actually use because it was very loud. The atmosphere was absolutely electric in there. Very impressed uh, by Salford as a whole and it's evident from, from everyone here that their goals are easily achievable. Michael, what did you think of today? Yeah, I mean, like just like you said, I think this is a club that is obviously growing exponentially, been rising so, so, so fast with that new investment. You know, this is a city at the end of the day. It's right next to Manchester, but it's a city. There's hundreds of thousands of people in this catchment area, and they don't have a club for themselves. Obviously, Man United are classically the Salford club, but that is a club for all of Manchester and the whole world now. This is like a really exciting club to be a part of, it seems, doesn't it? Like, yeah, definitely. Uh, I enjoy the safe standing as well. Mm. Uh, we were in there. Not a single problem uh, for the whole time we were there. Still enjoyable to actually watch the game standing up and actually get involved with the fans. Um, thank you to Salford yeah. for, for giving us access. It's been absolutely incredible what they've done for us. Uh, thank you for you guys for watching. Thank you for the fans of Salford for being welcoming. Uh, follow us on Twitter and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>